Hi, my name is Prashant and I'm the product manager for AutoRabbit CI CD platform. Today, I'll be walking you through the latest release of AutoRabbit, our 19.3 release, indicating a third major release for the year of 2019. To begin with, let me introduce our changed UI. We now make it easy for our users to access AutoRabbit menu with the persistent navigation bar on the left-hand side of the screen. Apart from moving to common landing pages for each of our modules, we're also introducing a quick merge feature at every place where you see a commit. With quick merge, Salesforce developers would be able to easily cherry pick and move a commit upstream or downstream on their repository based on the requirement. So let's see this in action. So under the commit history screen, or I'm on the uh, commit history uh, screen, uh, where you see a new column that says merge. So if I simply click on this button, uh, my uh, entries would be auto loaded into the web-based merge editor. So let's see that in action once again. So once I click on merge, I'll be automatically redirected to the merge screen and you would see that the from branch uh, has been populated, the merge type has been populated and the revision number that you're trying to merge has also been populated. Metadata API. So with this release, we are now supporting the window 20, that is API 47.0. To upgrade to 47.0, you do not need to install any patch or perform any sort of subscription upgrade. All you need to do is simply navigate to the admin section and to the My Account page, under which you'll find something that says My Salesforce Settings. Simply tune your Salesforce settings to 47 and save this setting and click save to save the setting and your order rabbit would now be a packaging and deploying on with API 47.0. Version control. We further improved our web-based merge editor for Salesforce to support line level conflict resolution with this release, the, handle, the incorrect handling uh, of merges in profiles has become pretty easy to solve uh, with the feature that we are introducing. If a profile file contains duplicate entries for any of the access settings, we now provide an interface that lets the user see these duplicates and delete them as part of their conflict resolution process. So I have a conflict resolution here. So if I simply click on the conflict resolution, uh, report, I would see that there have some files with duplicate entries. So once I click on the profile slash admin dot profile file, which is obviously one of my profile files, it says that there are no conflicts from a profile perspective, but there are some field permissions and layout assignments that, ha that have been duplicated. So with this uh, simple interface, I can see how many of those access settings are duplicated. It'll show you the number of matches. Uh, and uh, I can simply say that, hey, I, I think I can remove one of them. I'll simply click on the delete icon and say resolve duplicates. That will kind of save my file in the proper format. Now, AutoRabbit also does a verification of any file uh, that you're merging to see if it is under, if it falls under the Salesforce schema. If it, is not, if it does not fall under the Salesforce schema, you can simply download the file correct the schema and upload it back up. Continuous integration and delivery. With 19.3, we're allowing our users to map multiple or all sprints when configuring a JIRA or any ALM project as part of our CI job. Our Rabbit is the only product that supports a variety of ALM tools like version one, Rally, TFS, Azure, and many more. So, uh, if you want to con configure multiple sprints, all you need to do is uh, come into the CI job section, uh, check the option that says map ALM projects and under the ALM projects, choose your ALM entry and it'll ask you to choose all sprints or do you want to choose a single sprint? The only limitation that we want to communicate to our users is the, uh, the sprints should be following the same workflow model if they're not following the same workflow model, you will not be able to call that sprint into your configuration. This has been one of our favorite asks uh, over the last couple of months where people wanted to deploy, not based on revision numbers, but on based on user stories. So deploying based on user story just became a lot more easy. Deactivate and activate a CI job. 
You can now deactivate a CA job instead of deleting a job, deactivating pauses, webhooks, scheduling timers, and also it would prevent users from manually executing the job. You would still be able to see, for example, if you deactivate this particular CI job, that says my first CI job, I'll still be able to see the, uh, the older builds that have been executed by this job. To deactivate, I simply have to move this slider to the left-hand side, which will ask me for a confirmation if I want to do it. And I can reactivate it back up, and once I de reactivate it, all my controls in terms of the hook or the timers, the scheduling timers, would be back up and back uh, activated. Test automation. It is an exciting time to be uh, to be performing test automation in Salesforce. Now we are introducing a new CI job tile that allows users to configure and run test automation jobs. Not only that, you will now be able to run test automation, your test regression suites, even when there is a field deployment. So we have uh, removed the limitation that says that only if you have a successful de deployment, uh, that's when you can run your test automation jobs. Now your test automation jobs can be based out of Selenium, they could be based out of Prober, or they could be based off of Axel IQ. That brings me to my next topic. We have introduced a new test automation partner, Axel IQ, where you would be able to configure uh, Axel IQ, like you'll be able to run Axel IQ like jobs as part of a post deployment activity. To configure an Axel IQ job, you would simply have to register its credentials under the admin section. You'll have to provide the URL, the username and password that you'd be using. Uh, simply check the box that says test types Axel IQ. And under the post deployment activities of a CI job, uh, you would be able to configure uh, this uh, execution. So let's quickly go ahead and do this. So let me go ahead and create a CI job. Let's say I'm creating from my version control here. So let me name this job as my second CI job. And let me choose my repository. My repository is Git. Um, and my type, my version control type is Git. And my repository is October 2019, repo 19.3. Let me choose a branch. Let's say that I want to deploy from my developer branch. And I want to uh, deploy it to my integration uh, org. And while I'm configuring this, I would be simply able to say that on a successful deployment, I want you to run, uh, on a successful deployment, I want to go ahead and fetch an Axel IQ job by going in uh, and choosing Axel IQ here. All I have to do is I have to choose my project name and I have to choose what is the test type that I want to run. And if I, I want to in, uh, include any specific parameters that I want to run along with the job, I can include them there and save this. So once a deployment is successful or not, uh, you would be able to trigger your Axel IQ jobs, which makes it easy for a end-to-end -end 360 degrees integration. APIs. So we're now excited to announce that we are uh, providing money, many more APIs on our CI layer. So you'd be able to query all CI jobs that uh, you have in your uh, Rabbit instance. You'd be able to uh, trigger quick deploy on your on any of your CI jobs. You'd be able to trigger a build. So and many more. Now. In order to use the CI jobs, the API settings uh, from Autorabbit, you need to first register your API token. You can register your API token by going into the admin menu and clicking on API tokens. This will allow you to create a token. And instead of giving your password as in, uh, for authentication, you'd simply have to pass your authentication token. And this will be further used uh, when we release many more integrations in the future where API tokens would be the common platform for communicating between AutoRabbit and any third-party application. Thank you very much for patiently listening. I hope you have a great 19.3. Thank you.